I first start with the team that has been working on this project. My name is Mario Santa Cruz. I study maths and did my master in statistics. I'm here with Antonio that studied physics and now is doing his PhD. Uh, we both work in Predixia. For those who don't know what Predixia is, it, uh, it is a spin-off from the University of Cantabria um, with more than 15 years of experience in climate services. Uh, we have a, a team uh, that, have, that has a lot of experience in climate, remote sensing, uh, high performance computing. And the other part of the team is, he cannot be here today, is Javier, because he is going to be that soon. So he is online. And he is PhD in, in engineering and works in the Institute of Physics in Cantabria. Now I move to the project descriptions. I will try to be brief, as it's the same project as before. Uh, we try to get uh, ERA5 data to CIRA data. Uh, why to use ERA5? Just because it's a product uh, that is available real time with five delays, uh, with five days delay. Um, why to get uh, CIRA as output? Because of its resolution. As you can see here, uh, in the left is ERA and in the right is CIRA. And this is the, the border between uh, Spain and France. The difference are clear with the resolution. And this problem, uh, we, we want to present an important keyword here that is super resolution, that is transforming low resolution image to high resolution image. This is a keyword not used in, in meteorology, in climate, but as the models that we have explored during this challenge, we have to do a lot of research in literature, in computer vision, and this is the key, the, the main keyword that we use, super resolution. But it's the same, the same, the same idea as downscaling, as downscaling. So now we move to the data. Just to be brief, here data is very important, and we have a lot of data. Near, uh, uh, near 200 gigabytes. Um, this data can be accessed uh, publicly in the in the climate data store. Um, and just a, a few steps need to be done to to make ERA and CIRA uh, uniform. Uh, one as the main idea of these challenges are to learn things about the methods, how they work, um, and the data set. We decide to decrease the, the problem domain from the whole Europe to just a small region to can iterate faster in the, in the design choices of our models. So we choose a region that has different ecosystems as mountain regions, the Mediterranean Sea, uh, rivers, or even islands. And now, and now we move to the methodology, where I, I am explaining the, the methods implemented in, in our GitHub repository. We, we started implementing some basic interpolation methods that use only the surrounding pixels, pixels uh, to, to produce the, the output. This has the nearest neighbor or by cubic interpolation. Then we also implemented in our GitHub repo a uh, typical convolutional neural networks. We have been widely used in, in meteorology and climate science. Another method that we don't know that we don't implement in the in, in our repo, but is implemented in, in our partners repo is, is generative adversarial networks that uh, is also used for super resolutions. Um, the one of the main me methods that we explore here during our challenge is the transformers, vision transformers. And these methods have been very popular since its inception in natural language processing. Um, they have been adapted to be used for with image images. And the last method is the diffusion models, as as also the previous team we have explored these these models during the during the whole challenge and are implemented in our GitHub record to be used for anyone. 
Uh, I will start explaining the, the noise models. Um, as you get now uh, an overview of how they work, I will get into some details. Uh, these are the typical DALI, and um, all, all that models. And I will illustrate the case of unconditional image generation, where we have uh, zero images, and we start with this uh, an, an statistical process. The idea is just we take the original uh, zero image and we add the noise for a finite number of steps. Normally, it's around 1,000. Uh, in this process, we get to pull random noise. So the idea here is to reverse all this process so we have a model that can produce from noise the zero-like uh, fields, meteorological fields. And this reverse process uh, is what is learned by neural networks. We train a neural network that learns to predict the noise added at each step. So we can uh, use during inference the predictions of this neural network iteratively to uh, take from input noise to, to the output grid. And the key factor here for super resolution is just conditioning every, every of these steps on the on the low resolution image, so the neural network will will also take us into the the low resolution image, and that's how we implemented the the denoising diffusion probabilistic models. The other part that we explore is the vision transformers, and we implemented one of the state of the art neural networks in computer vision, that is the swing transformer with little variation to adapt it for for our setting. Uh, vision transformer are are really powerful and are the ones that presented the best results in in our challenge. Uh, one key factor here is that it use a a loss function uh, that combines three loss terms: one in the prediction, uh, one with the uh, down sampling. Uh, predictions on reference and one with the blur predictions on reference. The idea of uh, using the blur predictions on reference is to to capture the high future the high future details of each image and compare those high features. Um, and yes, here we use uh, this this type of network because it is more more efficient than than other vision transformer. Um, now um, a key topic here for for this for this modeling techniques is the standardization, and this is probably the main difference between our our case and and the literature that we have read. Because in classical computer vision problems, we are always working with RGB images, so the the normalization is something very similar. And here we are working with different variables and we are working with uh, different data. So here uh, standardization plays plays a very important role. We along the project consider two types of standardization. The first one uh, in both we compute the mean and the standard deviation uh, for each month in the training period. In one case, in the pixel wise, we compute those statistics for each pixel. And in the other, in the domain wise, we just compute uh, one one pixel for the whole domain. And now, we just I present some of the uh, details for the training, the number of parameters, around uh, seven hundred thousand trainable parameters, the learning rate, a sample, and the the range of the the, the data splits. Oral models are available in hugging face, so you can you can see our hugging face, and you will you will see all 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 models, both com uh, regular convolutional neural networks, uh, transformers, um, diffusion process. There you can see uh, training training logs, where you can see how the the model the models perform as as they were training. Um, and there are the technologies that we use. We use Python, uh, XRI for the data processing, and PyTorch for the for the modeling. Now, 
I leave the floor to Antonio, who will explain the validation. Thank you, it's great. Uh, so, uh, good morning. I'm going to talk about the validation approach that we have uh, followed. Uh, I, got, I have taken only uh, images for for the convolutional uh, swing transformer, which was uh, the model that uh, obtained uh, better results. Uh, for the validation approach, uh, we make the inference over the testing period uh, from January 1st, uh, 2019 to December 31st of uh, 2020. Uh, we have uh, two main uh, approaches. Uh, the first one in which uh, we consider the entire uh, geographical area uh, for making uh, spatial uh, maps, uh, and the other one in which uh, we take specific locations of interest um, that are all over the the area. Uh, these are well, Madrid city, Barcelona city, and some specific uh, mountainous regions that be uh, for interest uh, for the for the validation, like Mulacén or Anet in the Pyrenees. Uh, as a baseline, we have used uh, the Bakebuk uh, interpolation because uh, it is smoother than the uh, bilinear or the nearest neighbor. Uh, the results for uh, convolution for our convolutional uh, swing transformer are remarkable. Uh, we are able to reduce uh, uh, 34, 35 percent the mean absolute error of the bicubic interpolation, and uh, nearly 30 percent the the error uh, the root mean square error. Uh, on the top uh, side, uh, you can see the the difference uh, of the metric as uh, as an absolute value, and on the uh, downside, uh, you can see the the difference of the metric as a relative value. So we mainly perform better than the bicubic interpolation uh, all over uh, the region of interest. Uh, these are some uh, uh, samples uh, that have been taken randomly from our testing uh, set. Uh, we can check that the bicubic interpolation has. Uh, uh, not uh, present the the um, the small uh, artifacts that uh, Sarah or our model predictions uh, present and which are of interest in in this uh, super resolution task. Uh, we also want to uh, assess the versatility of our uh, models by taking uh, diverse diverse uh, regions. Uh, uh, such as uh, the Mulathan. Uh, here we are presenting just uh, two of the specific regions that uh, we validated, but uh, there are a lot of uh, figures uh, and uh, we have them available if, uh, if you want to check them uh, out. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, for the regions, uh, mountainous region of uh, Mulathan, uh, we can see that uh, their distribution uh, is almost uh, around zero. And uh, for the Ibiza Island, uh, we also are uh, closer to zero than uh, the vacuum big uh, interpolation. Uh, this is also uh, shown uh, in, the, in the time series as well as in the in the box plots. Uh, uh, one of the key factors of uh, this model is uh, its sufficient uh, inference inference speed. Uh, we have uh, uh, added a video uh, in which uh, hmm. yeah, you are not going to be able to to see, it, but uh, it is a video in which uh, we took a, a month of three hourly steps, uh, uh, like two hundred and forty eight samples, and the inference uh, procedure was completed in about uh, twenty one seconds in my. A local environment, just a, a normal uh, PC. Uh, uh, one, also, an important factor here is that uh, with this method, we are unlocking uh, Sarah like data access. Uh, what I mean with this is that uh, Sarah is an static data set, 
uh, there is only data from, um, I think, 1985 to 2021, uh, to June 2021. So uh, it is not uh, updated uh, frequently uh, as uh, ERA-5. Uh, what we have done uh, to show this important factor is we have downloaded the ERA-5 uh, August uh, month of 2023. And we have uh, done scaled uh, with our convolutional uh, uh, swing transformer uh, the, the data to the Serra uh, resolution. Uh, for being more specific, uh, we are going to uh, take a look at one of the heat waves that uh, 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 were uh, in uh, our uh, location, Santander, uh, which reached uh, its highest temperature of uh, 41 degrees. Uh, on 23rd uh, August. This is the uh, Serra estimates that we obtained uh, with, uh, our, with our model, and this is the ERA-5 uh, uh, data. It looks uh, good. <laughs> the infrastructure uh, used uh, uh, has been a virtual machine from the European Weather Cloud and also a virtual machine from the artificial intelligence for the European Open Science Cloud, which is a project in which uh, we are uh, participating. Uh, in both of them, uh, we have access to, to, uh, to a GPU, and it makes uh, much easier to, to train the models. The implementation has been open source. All the code is available uh, through our our GitHub, and we are more than open to co collaborate with anyone that wants to keep working on that or, or whatever. The project conclu conclusions, uh, we have made a super resolution success. We have uh, trained uh, a convolutional neural network, uh, a diffusion process, and also a vision transformer to uh, try to downscale area data to, to, the, Terra, to the Terra resolution. Uh, there are general metric improvements, as I mentioned before, uh, with a 35% uh, improvement in the mean absolute error and also nearly 30% in the root mean square error. And uh, also, uh, our model excels uh, uh, in diverse regions, from mountains to islands to coastal areas and so on. The next steps. Uh, in Predictia, uh, we have research projects in which, uh, in which uh, these uh, uh, methods can be implemented and can be useful. So uh, we want to keep working on, on this. Uh, we could uh, try to improve the performance uh, 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 using different uh, normalization schemes, which we think really think that uh, are uh, crucial in uh, this type of modeling and uh, also explore opportunities to uh, make the model uh, bigger as we only used uh, like 700,000 uh, parameters and there are models out there using millions. Also, also expand the, the modeling coverage. Uh, with this, uh, we have uh, two things uh, in mind. Uh, incorporate uh, variational encoders to reduce the data dimensionality uh, and uh, fit the model with uh, that uh, output of the variational encoder, and also uh, use patches instead instead of the entire entire domain. Uh, we could uh, try to predict uh, uh, different uh, variables such as precipitation or wind. We have only tried with the uh, temperature for now. And uh, it would be good to have uh, uh, to have this in a production environment where you download the era five data in real time and you make uh, uh, the the thera estimates uh, in real time as well. Uh, this is a thank you a slide uh, to Marianne and all the mentors Matthew, Andras, and Cornell. Uh, also to the ACM WF and uh, the code of our team, like Esperanza and, and Athena, and also for our source uh, uh, providers. And that's it.